Hey guys, for this screencast we're going to review uh, some of the points of gene expression. So by gene expression I mean taking the genetic information in your DNA, transcribing that into RNA, and then translating that RNA into uh, proteins, specifically linking together amino acids. Okay, so more accurately it's making polypeptides. Okay, so um, we're not going to talk about regulation in this. We're going to start off with uh, translation. And uh, basically with translation, what you have is a situation where the messenger RNA has left the nucleus and is in the cytoplasm seeking out a ribosome, be it a, a ribosome on the endoplasmic reticulum or uh, a ribosome just free-floating in the cytoplasm. But it's going to look for... Uh, this ribosome and it's going to uh, to be translated so the information in this messenger RNA is going to be translated into a series of amino acids now the RNA that participates in this is the transfer RNA so when you hear transfer RNA the transfer part is that it's transferring amino acids right so it, it some of these uh, for, for these amino uh, for these tRNAs you're gonna see amino acids being transported from the cytoplasm to the ribosome in a sequence specific manner. Okay, so a couple of features about tRNA uh, is that at various uh, portions they're, they're actually double stranded. And at the very bottom um, of the tRNA, tRNA molecule is this anticodon. Okay, it's anticodon because it's the opposite of the codon in the messenger RNA uh, message, right? So in the messenger RNA uh, sequence. So for example, here for this generic uh, tRNA, you have AAG as the anticodon, meaning the uh, actual messenger RNA would read UUC. Okay, so you're going to basically see a series of codons. Let's say that's codon 1, you have codon 2, codon 3. And basically the way that tRNA interact with the messenger RNA and bring amino acids in a sequence specific manner is this complementation between the anticodon uh, in the tRNA and the codon in the messenger RNA. So that's the, that's the interplay between those two types of RNA. Looking at the process in a little more detail, uh, you can see that there are two segments of a ribosome shown here. Uh, this is the, the large subunit and this would be the, the small subunit, because it's already written. Uh, and there are different uh, sites uh, on, on the ribosome. So you have a, an exit site, uh, a P site for peptidyl tRNA binding site. You can also know that as a peptide site. So that's the growing strand of amino acids. And then this A site, where a single amino acid containing tRNA binds. So it's called the aminoacyl tRNA. But basically, it's it's a, an amino acid, uh, a tRNA with a single amino acid that's going to be joined to uh, to P. Okay, so you want to think of it like that. Um, that's the concept. In actuality, it happens a little different, right? So overall, what you'll see is this amino acid uh, carrying tRNA that's in the P site. It's going to eventually have a whole growing string of amino acids. Okay, this is a lot like those balloons in the example in class. What happens is this tRNA in the P site is going to forge a bond uh, right here between these two amino acids. And it's basically going to transfer that growing strand of amino acids to the tRNA that is in the uh, A site. Okay, and this, this picture basically summarizes the process as a whole. Uh, showing how this, this transition occurs. So you start off with a, uh, a growing peptide strand in the P site, leaving the A site available for uh, an amino acid carrying tRNA to bind into that A site. The transfer occurs. Once that transfer occurs, there's basically a shift uh, in the messenger RNA, so it shifts this way, which allows this uh, tRNA to, to exit. Remember, it's got to go back and pick up another um, amino acid. It's now empty. And this uh, T 
tRNA in the A site is now left holding the, the bunch of balloons, right? You can actually see uh, the shift here. Now it's going to be in the P site, leaving an empty A site for another tRNA carrying an amino acid to come and bind. And the same thing happens over and over again. This, this guy is going to transfer this growing strand of amino acids. And it just repeats itself over and over and over again until it hits that stop codon. Once it hits a stop codon, uh, the growing uh, strand of polypeptide is going to stop. And essentially that polypeptide is done. There is not going to be any additional amino acids added to that. Okay, so that's, that's the overall process of translation. It's really uh, based on this interaction between the anticodon and the tRNA binding to and interacting with the codon that's actually condon that's actually uh, that's actually really funny uh, codon I guess a shout out to Mora on that uh, codon here is going to interact with this tRNA here okay and that's based on the messenger RNA okay moving on Really quickly, uh, one of the things that I really want you to understand um, with, with this whole process of gene expression is the significance of a mutation. In other words, the significant impact a mutation to DNA has overall, eventually, on, on the, the function of a protein. Okay, so shown here, uh, you can see that normally for a protein, uh, well, normally for a gene that encodes hemoglobin, you'll have a certain, you know, uh, segment of genetic code. That certain segment of genetic code leads to a certain segment of messenger RNA, uh, which will be transcribed into a normal sequence of amino acids that makes up uh, hemoglobin, right? If you make a mutation, say, to uh, this T here in the normal sequence, I lost my pen. Say you mutate this T here and you change it into an A. Well, basically now what you've done is you change the genetic code, right? Because of that, instead of uh, getting an A here in the messenger RNA, you're going to get a U because that's complementary to the amino uh, to the uh, nucleotide that we've added here. Now, because of that this codon here is different than this codon here. This codon uh, on the left here encodes uh, encodes glutamine. Basically, now that you've shifted this codon to GUA, uh, you're going to get valine. Let me check that in the book. Um, yeah, so that makes that makes sense. Literally, this single mutation, the single substitution leading to an altered messenger RNA copy, ultimately leading to a, um, a change in the amino acid sequence, totally alters the, the capabilities of hemoglobin, right? Instead, you get a disease called sickle cell um, anemia because of this. So it's actually really important that uh, you don't have mutations, that you have uh, the actual DNA uh, for a gene so that you can make the correct message uh, RNA so that you can make the appropriate amino acid, appropriate chain of amino acids so you can get a functioning uh, protein when those polypeptides come together. Uh, your book has this example. It's really good. I mean, it shows in general uh, what can happen when you make mutations. So uh, I'm going to use this example just to show you that you can make substitutions meaning that you can change one of the nucleotides. You can make uh, deletions, meaning you just remove uh, a nucleotide, or you can actually add an extra one. Uh, these two here would cause what, uh, what's called a frame shift. Okay, so keep that in mind as we go through these next examples. I'm going to have to hurry a little bit just so I can make my time. Um, Shown here is uh, what's called wild type. So wild type is just the normal copy of a gene. 
And if we look at this template here, in other words, this is the one that we're going to be working off of, you can see here that for uh, this chunk or this segment of DNA, you have CCG. Now, if you make a mutation to that sequence of DNA, and instead of that G, you add an A, what's going to happen? Well, when you transcribe this DNA into RNA, you're going to get this G like normal, you're going to get this G like normal, but you're going to get a U right here instead of the C that you should have. Okay, that's obviously going to uh, alter whatever sort of message you're, uh, the DNA intended to say, but luckily in this situation, the outcome is silent because the codon GGC and the codon GGU uh, both translate out into uh, to glycine. Okay, so mutations are not always harmful, even though we've altered the message from the DNA. Uh, this one tends to be uh, innocuous because it's it's going to the exact same amino acid. So in this case, the the cell would have gotten mucky. Here's a situation where we're not as lucky. Okay, so in this example, uh, for this this stretch of uh, DNA. We are going to change this first C, okay? Oh, no, we're over here, sorry. We are going to change this uh, genetic information. Okay, so normally we have TTC, which normally transcribes into AAG. But instead of the T up here, we're going to instead have a mutation and put an A here. Because of that, instead of getting the A that we should, we now get a U. Uh, the outcome of this is that, um, is that we've now introduced a stop. So normally AAG translates into lysine, but UAG instead translates into a stop. So what we have here is a nonsense mutation which leads to uh, a premature stop codon. So literally what we don't get is this amino acid, this amino acid, this amino acid. Okay, So we've lost all this uh, information. So chances are that this protein will not function. Okay, and I think I've actually skipped the slide. Yeah, I skipped one. That's why it didn't make sense. Um, we can quickly go over missense mutation. Basically, in this situation, instead of adding the C that we should, we have a T. Because this T is here, when we transcribe into messenger RNA, we instead change it into an A. Normally, it should be a G. The impact is that instead of putting a glycine in the polypeptide at this uh, particular section, we instead add a serine. Okay, so this is an example of a, a missense. It's a mutation that leads to uh, a different amino acid. Now again, uh, it's not as innocuous as a uh, silent mutation, but these can uh, you can kind of get away with this in the sense that if you change an amino acid, uh, say you change an amino acid from acidic to acidic, chances are that's not going to disrupt the protein as much as, say, changing an acidic amino acid to a basic amino acid. So keep that in mind with uh, missense mutations. Frame shifts, it looks like we will have to talk about another time because uh, we're just about at the 15 minute time point. But to make a long story short, you induce a frame shift mutation when you either add or subtract uh, a nucleotide. You can actually add or subtract many thousands of nucleotides. But let's just keep it simple in this case and say that it's one. This causes a change in all the downstream information in that genetic material. And we'll have to get back to that at another time.